was talking to us. I was preaching a message at the Women Weapons of Power Conference. And there was a segment that came up in that message. And he began to talk about jumping from the new heart into a passage about the church getting behind the veil. And so after that conference, as a prophet, I began to run with that word about behind the veil. And then last week, he began to explain to me more in detail that behind the veil is not a worship experience, but a lifestyle. You know, you see people sing it, you hear people talk about it, and we talk about it as if it is something that is supposed to happen in our services, when it is something that's supposed to happen in our lives. was on the cross. All that he did in the earth, turning water to wine, healing the sick, calling Lazarus from the grave, were works that people talked about. They were, they were, they were works that he was commended for, for being able to do in his flesh. Well. But then God began to say this. He said, the church is doing a great work in the flesh realm. But if we're going to go to the supernatural realm, Here because see, a lot of y'all need the organ, you need the piano, that's what you need to get in the 
going. You know, people say, you know, when folk hit A flat, and something happened to me. I, you know, when the organ, when the organ start going, I, who I just feel the power. See, because the flesh always needs assistance. Flesh always. from prayer partners, from friends, from, 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 <laughs> flesh always needs help. People that have flesh in churches need help. See, instead of them waiting on God to bring them people, they hire the best. But then what we have is, what we have is a bunch of talented people that we've hired that have no how but no anointing. Okay, I'm going to teach you here tonight. I'm going to teach you here tonight. I'm going to teach you here tonight. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Mm-hmm, God. Mm-hmm, God. Read the first verse. Go ahead. people. 
protected. So let me help you with that one. Let me help you with that one. Adam was created. He scooped, did he say? He scooped up the clay and he formed him. And then he blew the breath of life in him. That's Adam, not me. I was spoken in. See, listen, listen. He, he brought me in on something that would never fade away. Y'all see, he said, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. That means what Adam was made out of will pass away. He said, but the reason why I had to speak you in existence because I had to prepare you that no matter what the devil do to you, you will not fade away. Y'all don't understand something. You gotta understand something. You can't go under. Failure is not an option to a person that's been spoken into existence. Come on, y'all better say something here. Because I can't get nobody to grab that. Because I know, I know that's too much for your mind to comprehend. And in other words, I don't care what our struggle is right now. Y'all ain't saying, you got to come out. He got to bring you out because, because you have been spoken into existence. And his word, there is no error in his word. There is no mistake in what he said. Wait a minute, Prophet's Bible. You gotta be kidding me because, because you know what? You know what? You understand about some things that have happened to me. And see, I beg the difference about, about this thing about, about God. Say I can't feel because you don't know what I've been through. Watch this. Read. They went forth from my mouth and, and I made them know. Uh-huh. Then suddenly I did that. I see. And then suddenly. I spoke them here. I spoke them here. And then I did them. I spoke them into existence. Saying something, you weren't spoken into existence in January 16, 1959. He did you, he completed you. See, I'm saying something. Jesus didn't die on the cross over 2,000 years ago because the Bible said he was slain before there was a world. He came here a dead man already. Y'all, the only reason why he was able to walk around and exist is because he was the word part of God, which is a living stone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He already knew what his purpose was when he got here. That's why he couldn't fight the cross because he already knew where he would be processed to. Now, what is God saying? He said, too many people that I have spoken in existence don't know where they're going. They don't know what their purpose is. They don't know, they don't know what God has called them to be. They don't know what God has called them to do. And so what they do is they depend upon people in their church and people in their surroundings to label them and classify them as to how high your ministry gonna go and, and, and where you gonna operate at. And, and so now we are under the tutelage of other people dictating to us what we are going to be in the kingdom. When God is not calling us to be ushers and nurses, he is calling us to be women of God, prayer warriors, intercessors, impacting the nation not sitting on our seat looking cute and worrying about hairstyles and makeup he's calling us to have a purpose sister I think God is calling you I think God is calling you 
with you. I, I can't do that. I think God is calling you to be, to be a, to be a worship leader. I can't do that. I can't. You know what? I think the Lord is calling you to go across the nation. I'm scared to come in. I can't. I can't do that. He said, Okay. He said, You don't get it yet. That's who I call. I don't call people. Wait a minute. See, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. No, 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 you don't get it. I don't call people who got enough money to do it. I don't call people that can already sing. I don't call people that know how to preach. I call people that got the word in their mouth that says, I can't. Because then God said, good. Because now I can't. Well, then how do I know that God has called me? Why am I in here tonight? Did a flyer draw me here? I come here because I heard it on the radio. Did I come here because my girlfriend told me? Absolutely not. You got in this building tonight because there is a divine assignment and an appointed time, y'all ain't saying nothing, for a prophet to speak over your life to call you out of the congregation of the dead, y'all ain't saying that, and usher you in the purpose. Watch this. Let me show you what he said. Go to the fifth verse. What he said. Therefore, I have declared uh -huh. things to come to you from yes. of old. Yes. Before they came to pass. Uh -huh. I announced them to you. Yes. So that you could not say. Come on, look at this. My idol has done them. See, see, understand something. The things. That I desire to speak to you. Ain't nobody going to get the credit but me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. There are mysteries that I, oh God, let me prophesy here tonight. There are mysteries that I'm going to reveal in the mind and the heart of every person that is standing or sitting in this building. And when I revealed myself to you, no man will be able to say, it is I that helped her. It is I that did this. It is I that anointed her. It is I that appointed her. He said, I, I. You got to, you got to understand cancellation of relationships. I got to say it one more time. You got to understand cancellation of relationships. You got to understand why God cuts you off from people. You got to understand why God, y'all ain't saying nothing allows the enemy to mess up relationships because God can look up the road and see that somebody is about to steal my glory. So I got to back you up and put you. Watch this. I got to... I got to slow down here because... I got to slow down because I'm about to... I'm about to mess myself up here. Because see... I understand something. This ain't no preach for me. This is reality. This is reality. He said, he said here, he said here. What is it? My idol, what? What? I announced them to you. Yes. So that you could not say, uh -huh. my idol has done this. Read. And my graven image. Yes. And my molten image. Uh -huh. Have commanded them. Read. You have heard these things foretold. Uh-huh. Now you see. Wait, 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 wait. I prophesied this to you. We got people in here tonight. God.
God and prophesied some powerful stuff. And the devil done stole your prophecy. Lord, I'm, I'm, see, I'm on a vengeance right now. I'm on a, I'm on, I'm on a vengeance to get back prophecies. See, see, that's my, that's my job, to get back prophecies. It, because, see, God done spoke some things in prophecy. And see, what you don't understand, the mystery is this. And that is, in order for you to know that it's really God, after the person get through speaking it, it's got to go the to total opposite of what God said. Y'all ain't saying that. You know why? Because being there goes the trying of your faith. Not the trying of what God said. He said, I want to see if in the midst of opposition, do you still believe what I said? something that's the purpose of me telling you you gonna be wealthy when you as raggedy as you can be no you don't get it 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 that's the purpose of me telling you that your child is going to be delivered and they look like they about to lose their mind God, I wish I had some believers in here. Some of y'all that lost your faith. He said, that's the purpose of me telling you, I'm going to raise your ministry up and everybody around you got their hand on you and will not let you up and no doors will open up. He said, that's the purpose. He said, watch this. He said, watch this. The purpose for that is because I must throw my word further than the flesh. I don't think you see. I don't think you see what I'm saying. I must. I must. Put that out right there. Come here, Stand right there. Opposition says you can't. What opposition don't know is that before it got there, sent his word. So what he said has already gone before you. That's the reason why most folk that mess with you end up getting slapped in the face by your prophecy. Oh, come on here, somebody. That's the reason why most folk that try to put their hand on you end up having to stand right in your face and watch you get blessed. Talk to somebody in here. Can he talk to somebody in here? Why am I saying all this? Because I kept hearing him say, they don't believe me. He said, before the year is out, I'm going to start bringing prophecies to pass. He said, but they don't believe me. They don't believe me. No, no, no. They believe the enemy. They believe the words of the enemy. They don't believe me. See, I can hear, I can hear somebody way in the back of this place. I hear a cry way in the back of this place from somebody that says, Lord, I believe you. See, read, 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 read. Let me go, let me go, let me read. You have heard these things foretold. Yes. Now you see this fulfillment. Uh-huh. And will you not bear witness to it? Yes. I show you specified new things. Uh-huh. From this time forth. No, no, no. From this time. You know, God gave me a word in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. 
And um, when I spoke it, I spoke it like the Spirit gave it. But he said to me, he said, wherever you go before the year is out, he said, you tell them, I don't have time. I ain't got time to wait for you to believe it. He said, you don't understand. I'm going to do this thing for my name's sake. Some of y'all, some of y'all ain't got sense of a shout right there. He said, he said, I already know the devil done messed with your faith. So you know what? This time it ain't about your faith. It's about my name's sake. No, they said, I got my name on the line. I got to bring you out for my name's sake. I got to raise you up because I said I would. I got to anoint you because I said I would. I got to give you finances because I said I would. Oh, my God. I got to put some power in your ministry because I said I would. Showed you. Read that. In you a little heard bit. these things foretold. Yes. Now you see this fulfillment. Uh huh. And will you not bear witness to it? Yes. I show you specified, specified things. The people that I'm raising up in this hour, I ain't giving them the some gonna happen. Y'all don't get it. No, no, no. That ain't, that ain't how he talking to people that's chosen. As a matter of fact, that's what he gave me tonight. He said, chosen. I said, God, chosen for what? He said, no, no, don't. He said, don't add to it. He said, don't add to what I say. Just say the word, chosen. He said, because if you say chosen to prosper, Then, I, then you just limited them to what I'm talking about. He said, I'm talking from behind the veil. He said, you ain't even in a place to see what I'm talking about. You just tell him I said, chosen.
another layer, another level is being laid in your spirit. See, some of y'all don't get that. I was, I was in the, I was in the dentist's office yesterday, and uh, he put me under the, the uh, anesthesia, and I was slightly unconscious. And Sister Perry, all of a sudden, I just felt my hands. They were, they were laying on my stomach, and I felt both of my hands just unfold like that and just under anesthesia. When I came from under, the doctor said, you were praying, you were worshiping. He said, I had to take the thing out your mouth because you started singing. You know what God said to me? He said, that's what I'm talking about. Beyond your consciousness, that thing got to be down in your, in your subconscious. Every layer of your being has to be saying, Lord, I believe, 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 Lord, I worship you, Lord, I praise you. Oh, y'all listen. Every layer of your so, so I don't understand that. He just gave me this. He just gave me this yesterday. I don't understand this. So read, watch this. I show you specified new things uh -huh. from this time forth, even hidden things kept in reserve, which you have not known. I don't know what kind of people I got in here tonight, but there's got to be something wrong with the sound system for you to still be able to sit there when he said, I'm showing you now. Some of y'all don't understand. You say, but I don't see now. Ah, he's programming computing. In your memory bank now. New stuff. Read. They are created now. Yes. Called into being by the prophetic word. Ah, ah. to be by the prophetic word. Okay, so what are you saying, God? I can't find no show to them everything about you without the flesh not believing. Nobody has ever given us our whole prophecy. So he said, now the church world is forcing me to go beyond them and speak myself Y'all ain't saying that. He said, I didn't tell you to tell her that I was going to bless her with a car that she was going to use for the ministry. I said a bitly, but because your spirit is so jealous, now I got to let her have a dream that she was driving a bitly. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Oh, my God. I got to speak that thing to her in prayer for her to get it. You know why? Because nothing about us can come into existence unless it is Spoken by the prophetic. My God. Watch this. Read. They are created now. Ah, you ain't reading that right. You're not reading that right, you shall. They are created now. throw 
on this mic out there, some of y'all. You better for five minutes think about some stuff that you've been praying for and realize tonight that God just said, they are created now. Now, 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 not tomorrow, now, not next week, now. Say, tell them to touch their neighbor on both sides and say, I ain't got to wait no more, baby. It's an already happened. Now! I can shout now because it is so. Now, now, now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. If you don't read that, we ain't going to be able to get through. If you don't hurry up and read that, we're not going to get through. Read. They are created now. Uh -huh. Called into being by the prophetic word. They are created now. And called into being by the prophetic word. Somebody call it my prophecy into existence. Ha. I hear the Holy Ghost call it my destiny into existence. Y'all, I better stop. people that nobody said going to be nothing. I choose people who family background is alcoholics and drug addicts because what I have a desire to do is call their destiny in the be I'm a God of destiny. I got to stop. I gotta stop because I feel something in here. I feel something in here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church tonight. I'm calling your destiny into existence. See, God been dealing with me about, he been dealing with me about finishing. He been, he been dealing with me about finishing the scripture. Hurry up, because I'm about to jump clean off this platform. Her. Called into being uh -huh. by the prophetic word. And then what happened? And not long ago. And not long ago. And before today. And before today. You have never heard. You ain't never heard. Of them. You ain't never heard what I'm about to say to you. Lest you should say. Lest you should say. Behold. Behold, I already knew it. But read it. Yes, you have never heard. Yes. Yes, you have never known. Yes. Yes, from of old your ear uh -huh. has not been opened. Your old ear was not open. 
Be, watch this. Now, I didn't say this is a prophetic word. He said, before tonight, you walked in here with an old in you. You ain't never heard what I'm about to speak to you. It ain't never been revealed to you. God, I wish I had somebody grab a hold of that. See, let me tell you what you did. You watched somebody else. And you pattern what you wanted by what somebody else had. But God said what you did not know is that what I got for the chosen is exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you because I'm chosen. church. They don't know nothing about Christianity. They don't know nothing about the Bible. Nothing. And church people in here just having church. But can't hear having church and don't know that they chose it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Shouting, watch this, shouting beneath your privilege. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Then he reaches out and grab somebody out of the world and open up their ear and begin to prophesy in their life. And when I looked at Perry, I said, the devil is a lie. I'm not going to be in here all these years and somebody come in here out the streets and outrun me in God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I came and declared a night. You better shout, I'm chosen. <laughs> somewhere in a minute. Read, watch this. Yes, you have never heard. Yes. Yes, you have never known. Yes. Yes, from of old your ear has not been opened. Listen. For I, the Lord, uh -huh. knew that you, O house of Israel, yes. dealt very treacherous. I know you. Read. You will call the transgressor. I know your past. Read. And the rebel. I know what you're going to do. In revolt from your birth. I know about you since you was a baby. Nothing you do surprised me. But I didn't prophesy over you based upon what you was going to do. I prophesied over you according to my will before the foundation of the world. Y'all don't see this. Y'all don't see this. Before there was crack. Before there was a disco. Before there was James Brown. Before there was all these people out here. Before there was Reef. I shaped you and I formed you. And I prophesied over you. And then I set you down here. Watch this. To walk through crack. And to walk through the disco. Not to stay in crack, but to walk through it. Because your final destiny was already created before there was a world. So that's how I know that whatever you in tonight, you coming out because that's not your destiny. You were already prophesied over 
before the world was made. So everything that I am in, I am only going through. Watch this, give it a mess up. Supernatural ministry. See, I don't know about y'all, but y'all can leave your relatives out there if you want to, but not mine, not mine, not mine, not mine. He said, We gotta look at them and say, Praise God, my relative is having an earthly experience for a supernatural ministry. Send me up to the prophet's wife. You don't know how bad it is. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. My sister. My sister here. Kathy, come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Run, run, run. Either side, run, run on that side. On crack cocaine for 15 years. Living in the streets. Living in the gutter. Living in boxes. But two years ago, y'all ain't saying that. See, y'all don't understand that when God prophesies something, I don't care how bad it looks. Two years ago, God called her out of the streets. No rehab. I don't think y'all understand. But he instantly broke the spirit of crack. And two weeks ago, she built a house from the ground and closed up. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I said he has prophesied before the foundation. <laughs> See, my sister dancing for some of y'all relatives right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, y'all better catch the vision here. I said, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what the devil say. I don't care how he raging in your house. God has chosen you. Watch this. Y'all understand this. She didn't. She didn't tarry for the Holy Ghost. She came off the streets on a Tuesday. On a Sunday. The power of God knocked her out. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. She works full time in my ministry. One of the most dedicated workers we got. Have turned my bookstore department upside down. Came to me and said, God told me six months ago that I can build a house from the ground. What you think? I said, don't ask me. Because it may be a religious day for me. I said, hold on to your faith. Whatever God tell you to do, that's what you go after. She went to the realtor 
She said, build it this way. I want it this way. Didn't have a dime. Didn't know where she was going to get the money from. But when it was time to go to close on the house, she had every dime that she got. See, y'all ain't saying that to him. Because she understands uh, the devil done stole your word. The devil done stop your ears up. Uh, but touch three people and say, the devil is a lie. I'm chosen. chosen, I'm going to tell you why. This thing got me. Read the ninth verse one more time to show For my name's sake, yes, I defer my anger. I didn't get mad. And for the sake of my praise, yes, I restrain it for you, uh -huh. that I may not cut you off. Now here we go. Here we go. Here we go right here. Here we go right here, mother. This right here. I stopped complaining after I read this. <laughs> I knew God was up to something when I read this one. I said, God, coming up this year, two years, 99, 2000, I said, okay, I ain't going to make it. I can't take the pressure. I said, maybe you made a mistake. I don't make it. The warfare was great. The lies was great. The gossip was great. I said, God, I'm not going to make it. I said, I can't go through this. I never asked you for it. I never asked you to be famous. I never asked you to take me across the country. I'm not going to make it. I quit. I quit. And I'll never forget the day that I called to Titania. And I was screaming and crying on the phone. And I said, shut it down. Shut the whole thing down. Send everybody home. Everything we got in our bank account, divide it up with our staff and give it to them. I said, I can't do this no more. I said, shut it down. I can hear my voice right now. I can't do this. Because I was a black woman trying to break the glass ceiling. Because I was determined that my ministry wasn't going to just end up in churches and in hotel ballrooms. I was determined that I was going to be more than what man said I could be. I made up my mind that if Joyce Meyer can do it, and Marilyn Hickey can do it, and Gloria Copeland can do it, there's got to be a black woman somewhere that'll be willing to pay the price to show other black women that we have mega ministry in us too. I gotta stop. And I'm telling you, I'm talking to some men and some women in here tonight. When it looks like you've exhausted everything in your emotions to accomplish your goal, and the whole thing looks like it blows up in your face. 
What a place to be in. And I said, maybe I miss God. Maybe God never called me to do this. Maybe man made me famous. But God never called me to the masses. And then I turned to this scripture. Good God have mercy. What did he say to Shadda? Behold. Behold. I have refined thee. I have refined thee. But not as silver. But not as silver. I have tried. I have tried. And chosen and you. And chosen you. In the furnace. In the furnace. Of affliction. Of affliction. Y'all ain't saying nothing right there. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you saying to me? What are you talking about, God? He said, the chosen lives in a furnace. He said, the chosen never comes out of a furnace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all don't get that. He said, the greatest anointed sits on the chosen when they in the furnace. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they got tossed in the fire, laborers threw them in and got burned up. But guess what happened? When the king came to the mouth of the flame, God said, how do you know you're chosen? He said, because you got to stay in the furnace to men of high stature. Look in and say, I see a fourth one. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, you don't understand. That's where I am. I'm in the fire of affliction. That's where I am. I abide there. I stay there. I walk with you. I talk with you. He said, too many of my chosen ones are trying to get out of the trial. Too many of my chosen ones is saying, God, bring me out. God, fix it. God, work it out. He said, and tell him tonight, I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to work it out. I'm going to leave you right in it because you are being refined. Watch this. Refine. 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 What do you mean, refine? What do you mean? He said, the furnace exposes the difference between soul ties and divine connections. When I set the chosen in the fire of affliction, y'all ain't saying that. It gets rid of people that never were supposed to be a part of your ministry. I can't get no amens right there. Y'all ain't saying that. It exposes people that tried to buy you with money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, I can't get no amens right there. It exposes people that think they can manipulate and control what God has given you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. You know why? Because those that are not chosen can't stay in the furnace with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, only, that's why in this auditorium of night, you got people that are just, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you. And you got people. They're just looking. Because see, when you're not chosen, you fight the furnace. When you, well, y'all ain't saying that. You blame what you're going through on people. You hold grudges. You don't forgive. Lord, I'm preaching it here tonight. You backbite. You get a click in the church and you tell them your side. But when you are chosen and refined in the furnace of affliction, you ain't got no side. You ain't got to tell nobody. But you shut your mouth and you take it and you stay there because you've been made.
just say this to me. Let me tell you something. Something about to happen in here. How do I know? One more time. How do I know that I am chosen? Let me tell you how right now. Because the Bible said when they threw them in the furnace, they were bound with their hat, their coat. That's what the word said. They cloak. This is what it said. And all they belong. And they threw them in, bound. But when I opened my Bible on the way to church tonight, I read on down where it says, and when the king looked in, they was loosed with all my stuff. No, they saying that. How do you know you're chosen? How do you know you're being refined? In the furnace of affliction, guess what? Because you know what? You're able to stay in the fire and praise him like ain't nothing going up. No, they say that. You're able to stay in the fire and magnify him like you. You know why? Because in the fire, what you're saying is, I'm in here, but I ain't lost nothing. Yo, they say, I'm in here, and I ain't bound either. You know why I'm in here? Because the devil ain't got me in here. God got me in here. And when God got me in here, I'm loosed. I can praise him. I can dance. I can shout. You all ain't saying that. Because I'm chosen. treat her right. I know her kids is crazy. I know she on welfare. What's she so happy about? What's she shouting for? I know her ministry is going through. What's she praising God for? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. See, and that's when you get the reputation that you done cracked up, that you done lost your mind. But what they don't know is that I'm being refined because I've been chosen. And when I'm chosen, chosen folk don't crack up. Chosen folk don't break down. They break through. Chosen, y'all, they say nothing in here. See? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what God spoke to me. Today in the hotel, he said, listen. He said, listen. Anybody can get a helicopter to take them to the top of a mountain. He said, and they can get up there and they can testify to the world. I made it. I got a new car. I made it. I got a new house. I made it. Watch this. My ministry is all over the country. This one know me, that one know me, this one know me, that one know me. He said, but daughter, let me tell you something. A person that walks that mountain gonna run into some poison ivy. They're gonna run into some cactuses. They're gonna run into some snakes. Y'all ain't saying that. They're gonna run into some, 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 some of them little python things. They're gonna run into some pits. They're gonna run into some traps that was laid for animals. Y'all ain't saying that. And everything that they run into, it's on their way to the mountain. He said, because when they get there, the next time I take them to the next mountain, they're gonna be able to walk by a cactus and say, hey, I'm not moved by that because that's a cactus. I didn't experience that before. Oh, 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 that's poison ivy. I didn't know what to do with that before. He said, but this generation can't go through the fire 
because they won't let themselves go. They got prayer partners to get them out. They want to be counseled out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, sometime I'm going to let the devil turn your lights out because I want you to learn how to praise me in the dark. I want you to learn how not to let earthly circumstance steal your praise, steal your anointing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, I know for a fact that prosperity is hitting the nation. But watch this. But God said to me, you can have a million dollars. But what you chose, with the million, I got a fire and a furnace affliction. Because I'm going to put you through something that your money can't get you out of. Y'all, y'all, I can't, I can't get no help in here. See, see, cause see, that's why you better cool all that down. Honey, I got it coming. Oh, I'm getting ready to be rich. Oh, it's been prophesied. But yep, when you're chosen, you're going to be rich. Watch this. You're going to be rich. Ain't nothing going to be wrong with your kids. They're going to be saved. Your marriage going to be good. But down in the corridor of your spirit, there's going to be an unrest in your soul. And you're not going to understand why at 3 o'clock in the morning with a bank full of money and a nice husband next to you and wonderful kids up the hallway, why you can't sleep. He said, watch this. He said, because, watch this. He said, because those that are chosen, He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was noised abroad by men of their ability to hear from God. I said, sure. But it didn't hit the world until they went in that furnace. Until the king looked in. And that, watch this. And that, see, y'all gotta get this. Y'all gotta get this. You gotta get this. That's when the king changed the king to be governed by who they were. See, see, folk won't y'all, you want God to change my house, God, change my husband. He said, mm, I'm going to put you in the fire of the furnace of affliction. And you ain't coming out until your husband can look in there and say, you, you, you know you really love God, don't you? And you really in that thing for real, ain't you? No, 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 Susan. See, see, at first, first I thought you was playing. You, you really in that thing for real? Then you go, yes, I am. You know what, then? Then you just, you just, you just, uh, uh, you just, 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 just pray. When they say that, that's the king. Next time you come in the house, Kids acting crazy. You gonna hear him say, cut all that out. Y'all mama just came from church. She don't wanna hear all that noise. So all right. All right. See, y'all don't understand. He didn't say, the Bible didn't say that the king got saved right away. He used the devil to transform your atmosphere to the way you want it. I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying in here. See, when you stay in the fire and the presence of affliction, God will begin to use your enemy. Oh, y'all, to bless you, to make sure your atmosphere is right. God will begin to use your enemy. You cannot come out until the devil declares. When the devil looks at you and declares that they see God, 
how long do I stay in the furnace of affliction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long do I stay? Watch the final tell me. Tell me how long I stay. understand revelation don't you he brings you out in it when people tell you God bringing you out he bringing you out in it he ain't bringing you out of it he bringing you out in it So the atmosphere ain't gonna even bother you no more. How you know, how you know that he bringing you out in it? When you can go right next to your enemies. Bless that heart, baby. Girl, you all right? Stand right next to, no, 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 no. Don't move your seat. Stay right there. Don't change churches. Stay right there. He said, devil, you ain't running me out of my church. Because you know what? What I'm going through is not in this building. It's in the furnace of affliction. I'm being refined. So God says, you was over here. Shouting and dancing and praising. All the good prophecies. Ooh, I got a new car. Oh. said, okay, come over here in the furnace and praise me like that in here. Watch this. That's when off of your head. Tonight, if you praise me over here, I'm going to lift it out of your spirit. Because tonight, so you've been in there fighting and trying to do it. He said, but tonight, I'm getting in it. And when I get in it, I take the heat out of the flame. Y'all ain't saying that. When I get in it, what used to be fire turns into a revival. When I get in it, what used to be pressure turns into an instant victory. So I said, what you so happy for? God done got in it now. God done got in it now. And he said, I brought you in this place tonight because it's transfer time. See, I ain't talking about to a few of y'all in here. Watch this. He said, Thou in your spirit right now, that after this night, I ain't calling nobody else for a light bill, a phone bill. I ain't calling nobody else. When it get hard, y'all ain't saying that. You don't know what I see. He said, if I can find at least 30 people in this building tonight that will make the decision to loose me in the fire with them. He said, not only will they not need nobody, but I'm going to do stuff in them and for them that they have never seen before. He said, because tonight I called you in this place to call forth my chosen. I ain't talking to religious people now. 
He said, get it in your mind what you are going through and just start saying, God, thank you for it. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about he said, thank me. And the way he wants you to thank him tonight, he wants you to thank him like this. You don't have See, I just lost half of the building right there. Everybody just went home. About 10 people out there now. See, see, and see, and see, I hear somebody saying this. No, 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 no offense, because that's how we've been taught in church. Lord, I thank you anyway. Because he anyway says, Pastor Scott, I don't like it. So I just thank you anyway. He said, I want you to thank me as if somebody just gave you a million dollars. Well, wait, he said, I just need to find 30 people that'll thank me as if what's bad 